Hello, Ted here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is a box review and build of the Bluebird K7 by Speedline Models. This is the vessel uh, driven by Donald Campbell between 1955 to 1967 in his attempts to uh, break the water speed record, uh, ending in a disastrous uh, crash in 1967 in which Donald lost his life. Uh, this is a 124 scale. Um, uh, my intentions are to build this model as a static display. However, it can be converted to um, re fully radio controlled uh, by contacting Speedline themselves. Uh, what we're going to do, have a look at it first, and then in further videos, we're going to go on and build the model itself and see how it turns out. Uh, well, first of all, the box. The box is quite a large box, as you can see from the video. Uh, it's got an actual size uh, drawing of the model itself on the front with a picture of the uh, driver Donald himself. Uh, quite a sturdy box, uh, let's have a look inside. This is a vac form kit uh, which means that the uh, parts are all um, vac formed through moulds made in the factory and looking at them nice sharp quite substantial um, parts. Let's, let's move this box out of the way and see what, let's see what else we get as we go through. Uh, obviously the instructions are a little bit on the front about the history. Um, it's made from, it tells you that the model itself is made from a vac formed high impact polystyrene sheet and it's in 124 scale. Uh, from that we can produce an accurate model um, going on through, there's a number of versions that can be built and we need to decide uh, what's uh, right at the start, what version uh, we're going to build. We're actually going to build the final uh, version, the 1967 version, <coughs> um, probably the most famous uh, version of all. Uh, that's the attempt on Coniston Water uh, when uh, Donald uh, unfortunately crashed and lost his life. Um, so yeah, the, it's all written instructions, uh, a few diagrams as we go through, uh, and also instructions how to power the motor um, with a solid solid fuel rocket as it goes on. And at the back, uh, a little bit faintly printed, but I think they are visible, uh, just some uh, templates for cutting out various bits and pieces. Okay, let's have a look at the bits and pieces themselves. Okay, as I said before, this looks like a fairly substantial uh, vac form moulding. Nice and clean. Nothing unusual about that. That's the upper hull. Uh, I take it that this will be the lower hull somewhere in there. Uh, we can see here that we've got the vac form mouldings for the rear tailplane, uh, one or two of the bits and pieces. We're not quite sure what they are yet, but we'll find out no doubt as we carry on and go through the build. Um, <clears throat> these, bit looks, these bits look like the sponsons, uh, left and right. Yep. If we're looking at the plan, I think each, each version, yes, they all had sponsons on them. On the tail point. Uh, what else is in the box? Well, we've got some wooden sprues, uh, wooden rods, um, a small wooden block. No doubt its use will come clear. Uh, a small piece of acetate, uh, perspex sheet. And we have some uh, look like yeah, look like water slide decals. Yeah, okay. That's going to go on all together than that. Uh, other than that, there seems to be just a piece of um, styrene plastic card in the box. I would probably think they would be for cutting out 
stencils from stencils later on and from the templates. Uh, and other than that, that looks like the box is empty. Um, so really not many parts to do. Um, it doesn't look um, immediately as though it's uh, got a lot of detail on it. I am going to attempt to uh, put some extra detail as this is going to be a display model. Um, I'm going to look at putting some extra detail on that. And to help me with that, I've already began looking through the internet and finding some uh, online pictures. If you are doing any builds yourself, either this kit or any other kit that you uh, want to build, I, I would always recommend um, having a look, doing some research. It does actually make the build a little bit more interesting. Um, you'll pick up lots of information, you'll find lots of photographs. Uh, there's a man himself, Donald, uh, stood on the aft, on the tail of his uh, uh, boat, ship, rocket, and he would be stood about here, I would suggest. Okay, okay, right, so what we're going to do now is um, have a look at getting one or two of these parts cut out. I think the ideal thing would be to cut everything out first, um, and then we'll... Uh, we can start on with the build. So let's get on with doing that. Okay, we're ready to cut some parts. Um, what I would suggest um, with vac form, um, really when you're cutting out, it's a little bit difficult to see where you actually need to cut. Um, what I would recommend is that you take a CD marking pen or something, or, or a fine tip Sharpie, and draw around the line where you want to cut. Uh, makes it a lot easier to see, um, you're not stopping and starting um, as you get near and um, wondering where you're going. Um, then just really what you need is a pair of scissors, decent scissors, and just cut around on the outside of the line. Don't attempt any fine cutting or anything like that. All we're doing is taking off the majority of the waste. I'm just doing the bottom part, the bottom, uh, the whole bottom here. Carry on. All around. Fairly easy to cut, styrene is just easy to cut. I'll drop that on one side. Uh, usually you can throw the rubbish away. I, I never really throw anything away until I've actually finished everything. Um, some of these spare parts, some of these just off cuts might be simple simply used just for filling in any gaps, holes or building something up. Always handy to uh, have a piece of plastic. You need to do that on all the parts and then take your craft knife and you can find it and this is where we can begin some more accurate cutting. Now with styrene the secret is not to go all the way through on one cut but to do a series of long cuts all along the same line, all along the line. And as you go, it will come off. It's simple, just carry on, cut up to the line, not over it, not into it. Just cut as far as you can, as near as to the line as you can get. Long, steady, don't press, just let the knife do the cutting. Just angle your knife in towards the cut a little bit. And then continue along, just cutting the parts off. See how we're getting just close to, but not at the line. There's a slight edge to it where, if I can maybe draw it for you. 
if you can see along here that as the plastic is formed under the mould it actually turns itself up if that's the whole bottom there's a lip, a rounded lip here and this is the where the line is in there and it's this piece we want to eventually cut to so the hole comes down and this is the piece we want to be taking off this rounded part here that's where the line is to do that we're now going to take um, some emery paper and find some just bear with me a moment and we'll find some to one side and we're just going to have a look at this little bit here and then what we do just rub and rub and you'll feel that edge disappear Keep your every plate paper nice and flat. Thinner and thinner. It will get quite dusty, so uh, make sure you've protected all the surfaces. Uh, if you're working on the dining room table, this will get a little bit dusty. And what will happen? Getting there. We're, really, we're getting there now. Apologies if you can't hear me properly while I'm rubbing this down. As you get towards the end, it will start producing small slivers of plastic. So when the plastic starts coming off, if I can pick that up in small slivers like that you see see that that's when you're at the end that's the pit that's the bit done see it's coming off Take your time, don't rush it, don't take too much off. You can always stop and take a bit more off. Stop again, take a little bit more off, but you can't put more back on. And you'll feel how the edge, the rounded edge, will slowly disappear. And that is how we cut vac form mouldings out. So we could do that on all the parts. And then come back. I'll cut the rest of these parts out and then come back and we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, just before uh, I clean up, I thought I'd come back and uh, just show you what sort of mess this procedure does make. As I say, if you're uh, doing it on the 
dining room table. Make sure the area is well protected uh, and clean up after yourself. Don't want to upset upset anyone. Um, chose the correct sponsons for the uh, model that we're doing, the 1967 model. Uh, we've cut those out. It does say in the plan about the um, sponson bases. I had to look round and really work out where they were and found that these were actually the sponson bases. Um, if you look, the sponson actually sits on those and glues on. When that's cut out, that'll be a little bit more flexible and will fit the contour of that sponson. Um, as I say, when you're rubbing it out, if you feel along and you can feel a slight lip, it just needs a touch more to come off. I've actually resorted to using a metal file on the more substantial parts of the plastic. Yeah, it takes it off a little bit quicker than using the emery paper. As you see, it generates a lot of dust. And as I say, as I said before, when you're cutting it out, when you know you've got to the right stage when a small sliver of plastic like that comes off and that's it you just about another another rub just to just to tight uh, smarten it up and that's it done okay I've just got a couple more parts to put out uh, cut out and then we'll come back and have a look at putting one or two that one or two things together okay thanks for that well there we are that's um, all the parts uh, now cut out I'd certainly recommend that you do cut the parts out before you start any building because it is, as you saw, um, really messy and it's a good idea to get all the mess out of the way. I'd certainly set aside a good evening or a good, af um, a good uh, lengthy modelling session to uh, get all these parts cut out, um, cutting them out and then filing them, uh, rubbing them down to shape is uh, a tedious uh, uh, a long job. Um, good to get it out of the way, all preparation uh, is all worthwhile. Um, the next stage will be uh, putting it all together. Uh, I'll be using um, a plastic weld for this and also a liquid poly, both of which seem to work fairly well. Uh, certainly this one works fairly well on this ABS plastic. Uh, I've done a, two, uh, I've done a few uh, tests um, gluings with the liquid poly on some scrap bits of plastic that we've cut out and that seems to work pretty well as uh, as well. Uh, just a hint, when you're cutting the spar covers out um, I would recommend that you label the backs of them. Uh, they're set out onto the uh, the mouldings um, on, on the uh, formings uh, as in pairs so I'd recommend that you um, at least mark them up some way to uh, identify them later on. Um, I think we'll also be using some model filler. I'll be using the um, Squadron products, the green putty. I find it fine. It does what I want. Uh, I'm used to using it. There's lots of different versions out there. Um, use any of those. I'm sure um, that we will we'll be using some of this. Um, right. That's about the end of this uh, first video. What I'm going to do now is take some time um, to plan what we're going to do next, how we're going to do it. And maybe that will add some detail to the main body of the whole first. It may be that we'll put it all together and then add the, the detail later on. Um, I've got to have a look, sit down and plan what we're going to do uh, for our next video. Um, that's about all for now anyway, but thanks for watching and uh, have a look out for the next build of the Bluebird K7. Thank you very much.